Hey guys, guess what? I'm getting ready for fall. So if you want to find out how Professional Violinist prepares for fall for the new academic year, stay tuned. Okay, so first, I actually start my fall preparations at the end of July, the last week of July. I'm a big Harry Potter fan and July 31st is Harry Potter's birthday. So I like to celebrate by uh, taking my bow in for repairs and re-hairing. I think of my bow as sort of like my wand. So it's sort of like a trip to Ollivander's right before uh, term starts on September 1st. Now let me show you. I want to shout out to Lash Off Violin in Gaithersburg, Maryland, which is where I take my bow because they do this for me. They custom blend my bow to the exact shade of a purple that I'm looking for. Now if you know me well, I've got a purple cup, coffee cup, and it matches my bow, which I think is awesome. Okay, uh, so you need to rehair your bow and have any repairs done on it to prepare for fall. Um, new strings is on my list for fall prep. Now I have these, I just got them in. If you are over on my Patreon page, you saw the day that I got them a couple days ago. I posted the picture. So these are, let you see them. Okay, these are the Peter Enfeld strings. They're a tomastic string. I have never tried these before, but I hear great things about them. Now, if you're a beginner watching this, um, this is a professional level string. So uh, if you go to check them out, they, I think they only come in the full size. So uh, they're not going to fit on a fractional size instrument. Um, and don't have a heart attack when you see the price because that's just the nature of professional strings. Um, that's another video I can make uh, later, different string recommendations. But new strings on the list for fall uh, quarter preparations. Now, if you have a, an event that's coming up uh, in the fall, you might want to stick with a tried and true string set. Don't experiment if you have something coming up. We don't want any surprises. Stick with something that you know your violin likes. Okay. Let's get into supplies other than strings. By the way, I have a mind map of all the things I want to talk about, so I'm crossing them off as I go. Okay, so supplies. Make sure that you have manuscript paper. I use manuscript paper for jotting down musical ideas and for practicing, especially when it comes to memorization. Um, something else that I have on hand are batteries for my electronic metronome and tuner. So you want to make sure you grab a pack of those. Shoulder rest and sponge. Make sure that's in good working order and that if you sized up, if you're a uh, student player and you're going through the sizes of instruments, that the shoulder rest or sponge still fits uh, the size of instrument that you have. Um, if you have one that's kind of falling apart, this might be a good time to replace it. Make sure you've got a nice fresh cake of rosin. Rosin is better when it's a little more fresh. Um, I have recently bought the Milos, Melos, Milios, however you say it, uh, brand, and I'm really loving it. I'll do a review uh, for you on that, but make sure you've got a really nice cake of rosin. If it's cracked and falling apart, it's time to get a new one. Okay. I always make sure that I have um, polishing supplies handy. Now you don't want to polish your instrument too much, but a good polish before the fall term begins is, is when I like to take care of my polishing needs. So make sure that I've got the polish that I want and nice clean polishing cloths. Okay. If you're doing any orchestral work, you'll need to make sure that you have your mute um, and then you might want to have some peg drops or peg compound handy in case you have an issue with your pegs. Now, I don't have that issue anymore because I don't have traditional pegs anymore. Um, but if you do have traditional pegs, you want to keep that handy just in case. That way you can um, fix it and keep your pegs from slipping as the weather changes uh, until you can get in to see your luthier. Okay. You might also want to make sure you have your chin rest key in your case in case it comes loose uh, or go ahead and make sure that your chin rest is properly attached to tighten it up and you should be good to go for the fall. Okay. Is there any sheet music that you need to order? Any books that you need to order? Make sure you have that on the way. Okay. Now speaking of books, 
Um, are there any books that you want to read to further your knowledge about music history or music theory? Make sure you order those or request them from the library. Okay, are there any technique books that you need to get that you're interested in? Or if you're a student, um, are there any books that your teacher has been asking you to purchase? Have you done it yet? Make sure that you order those technique books. Okay, something else in supplies are pencils. Pencils are so important. Um, I use two different kinds. I like the Ticonderoga pencils, the classic yellow ones. Those are my favorite for marking sheet music. Um, and then I also like Crayola's erasable colored pencils because you can mark up your music and erase it when you're done. Unlike traditional colored pencils, those are permanent. Especially if you are marking up orchestral music, you never want to use pen or anything that cannot come off because that is not your music. You don't own it. So make sure that your markings can come off. <laughs> But if you're marking up your personal music, you can go to town, uh, putting permanent markings if you want. But I really like the erasable Crayola colored pencils for my practicing and teaching purposes. Are there any recordings that you need? Um, if you're learning something, you really should listen to it. So um, if you know that you're going to learn something, that your teacher has assigned something, or if you have something you want to learn personally, make sure you have the recordings to go along with that. So order them or download them. Um, you can also create YouTube playlists of artists who have already recorded it or have given a concert of this piece so you can compile a playlist of pieces that you're going to be playing in the fall. Um, some orchestras do this, some community orchestras uh, find really good YouTube recordings and make a playlist uh, for all the pieces they're going to play that quarter. Okay, something else that you need is a practice journal. Um, I, I do keep a practice journal. If you're a student, you might need a separate notebook for your parents to take um, lesson notes, or if you're an older student, a more independent student, uh, taking notes at your lesson can be very helpful. So you want to make sure you've got notebooks around for that. Um, at some point, I will give you a tour around my practice notebook. Okay. Along with that practice notebook, you need to set some goals, right? If you want to be productive and get some stuff done this fall semester, then you need to set some goals for yourself. So take some time out, decide what you want to work on before fall begins. That way, by the time September 1st rolls around, that you'll have a plan in place. Okay, I like to set my goals for three months at a time. So I'm doing September, October, and November. If you're a teacher, going back to books really quick, um, you know, music history, composers, uh, but also pedagogy. So if there are any things, uh, any books that you want to read about teaching methods, that's something else you might want to check out. Okay, let's see, where are we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, electronics. So uh, make sure that you have, I like to have a Bluetooth speaker for my practicing because sometimes the um, iPad or the I iPhone's not quite loud enough to play along to when I'm practicing. So I have this speaker, I can't remember the brand, I don't think it says on here, but I really like it. It's actually solar powered. <laughs> Um, I brought it home from my studio uh, at the beginning of COVID uh, in March. I have not had to plug this thing in once <laughs> since then. Okay, so a nice Bluetooth speaker is something we want. I also have uh, Bluetooth headphones. These are great uh, for practicing. Okay, this is the, the brand. This is Rybox or I don't know. Okay, so that covers our speaker and our headphones. Um, if you play electronically, if you have an electric violin, you want to make sure that your cables are in working order. Um, I have a pedal that I use uh, for page turning on the iPad, so I have to make sure that that's uh, lovely and charged and still in working order. So you never want to get into the semester when you have all of these um, things planned, like gigs and performances and rehearsals, and not have your... Uh, materials working for you because um, if you have enough things <laughs> going on you might actually have to deal with not having some of these things for a few of these events uh, and that can be sort of a nightmare 
and for some things that you're doing, it could almost be impossible. So you want to make sure everything's in working order before the, the term even begins. Okay, um, how's your iPad? You know, if you use your iPad like I do, I have my iPad Pro that I use for digital sheet music and recording and everything. Um, how's that? Do you need to clear up any space on that? Is there anything that needs to be deleted? Um, that sort of, of thing. Now, when it comes to digital music, do you have any files that you need to add into things like Fourscore? Do you have any apps that you need to add or apps that you need to take off? So I like to use the Total Energy Tuner, Total Energy Tuner, and the AnyTune apps. Um, those are pretty much the only apps I use. I also have a regular digital tuner. Um, it just, like one that's not on my iPad. Um, it just, I think the non-app things work best, um, but in a pinch you can use the apps. Uh, during COVID, it becomes a little bit of an issue to use your device for practicing as well because we're using devices so much for teaching and communicating with people that by the time practice rolls around um, or you're just not able to get through the day on a single charge so that can be an issue so it might be a good idea right now to have an actual digital tuner a uh, little more old school way so download any apps that you need um, organize any of your digital sheet music files Scan in any music that you want to turn into digital sheet music. Again, for that, I like to use Fourscore. And I can use my pedal to change pages in Fourscore. Okay, so I think that covers electronics. All right, let's talk about the calendar. Uh, so the calendar is a little different this, this time around because of COVID, so most people don't have um, performances and rehearsals. But I'm going to talk about this as if we were in normal times. So this is the time to organize your calendar. Okay, get everything on there. Okay, make sure that if you have any auditions coming up, that the audition dates are on the calendar. Okay, because you also need to count backwards when you're planning your audition to set goals for yourself. You know, by so many days before the audition, or by this date, I have to have this done if I want to succeed in this audition, sort of thing. So start with your auditions. Okay. And then also you need to add any rehearsals that you have to the calendar. And that would be rehearsals for things like your orchestra. Um, if you're playing in a quartet, um, if you have any um, concerts for those things, the rehearsals for those. Um, if you're rehearsing with a pianist, if you have a collaborative pianist that you're working with, get all of those things on the calendar so it's done and dusted and you're not trying to dig through your emails uh, or text messages to figure out when you're supposed to be at places, at a time, okay? Get it together, people. Get it together. All right. Something else that you want to work out right now is your practice schedule. You need to put on the calendar when you're going to practice. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen, okay? So get yourself organized. That is how we are successful people. Get organized, okay? Schedule your practice. Find a routine that works for you and stick with it. Um, sort of along that vein, uh, we need to talk about your health, okay? Uh, being a professional musician is hard on your body. You need to take care of yourself. Your first instrument is your body, right? So you need to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, okay? Are you getting downtime to relax? Are you meditating, you know? Let's keep our mental health in check. Are you eating correctly? Okay, are you exercising? So for musicians, it's important to not only get your cardio in, but also weight training for injury prevention. Okay, we can really injure ourselves bad if we're not in good shape. Okay, so we need to make sure we got all of that going. Journaling is great. If you see a chiropractor or a massage therapist, you need to schedule those now, okay, those appointments. So take care of your health in the last couple of weeks leading up to fall. Make sure you're on track with these schedules. Make sure you're getting into routines where you're eating right, where you're prepping your food, getting enough sleep, and getting enough exercise. You need to take care of those things first and then get your uh, practice and rehearsal situations settled, right? Because like I said, your body is your number one instrument. You can't play your instrument if this instrument isn't in check. Okay. You need to stock up your case. Okay, this is especially important if you're going places, but we're all pretty much stuck at home right now. 
uh, but normally, in your case, you need an extra set of strings, okay? If you can't do that, make sure you have an E string. That's the string that breaks the most. I have like five extra E strings in my case right now. Okay, are your mutes in your case? Is your rosin in your case? Are your pencils in the case? A pen. Okay, so we don't use pen on sheet music, but you need a pen in your case because there are other things that you need an ink pen for that a pencil will not work for. So make sure you have at least one pen in your case. All right. I also keep a paper, a notepad, a legal pad in my case, like this one. Okay. I prefer to take notes by hand than uh, digitally in my note app. Also, sometimes uh, at rehearsals or whatever, you're trying to work something out and having a piece of paper that everybody can see is better than your phone. Okay, so make sure you've got a paper notepad or you might have some really good ideas that you want to jot down. Okay, um, peg compound, peg drops, we already talked about that a little bit. That should be in there. Your chin rest key should be in there. Your Allen wrench should be in there. Okay. Um, an alternative that you can use to like the, the peg count or peg drops is chalk. So just regular chalkboard chalk. You can have a piece of that in there that will keep your pegs from slipping. Okay. A uh, couple things. A snack, like a granola bar. Get yourself a granola bar in your case because it, if you're a professional musician uh, running around from rehearsal work to rehearsal, from gig to gig, sometimes it can be hard to eat. Okay, go back, get that eating on the schedule. Okay, like I was saying, take care of your first instrument first, but sometimes it just falls through the crack and it's just not possible. So having a granola bar or something in your case, a snack that doesn't go bad is a lifesaver. Believe me, I've it saved my life several times. Okay, get a snack in there. This one's a little weird, maybe. I've had people laugh at me about this before. Deodorant. Get yourself some deodorant in your case, okay? Because you can sweat a lot during rehearsals or a performance and your stand partner does not want to sex you, okay? But practice good hygiene, obviously, people. But sometimes deodorant could be something that you want to keep in your case, okay? Now, let's talk about humidification. Okay, so uh, make sure that your instrument has some sort of humidification system in the case. All right. So in the case we have a hygrometer or most cases have hygrometers when you get up to the full size. If not, um, then you can get uh, little hygrometers to go in there and you can also get room hygrometers. Um, mine is at my studio currently, which I need to see if I could possibly get. I don't know or I can just order another one. Now, your instrument likes a humidity level of 40 to 60% if you're playing a string instrument. 40 to 60%. So that's the humidity that you need in your case and in the room that you keep it in and practice it, okay? So you can get hygrometers that go in your case and then just in the room, okay? But within the case itself, you need to have some source of humidity here, okay? So this is what I have in mind. Ariane in case humidifier. I just fill up these gel crystals with water and over time it slowly releases um, moisture into the air within my case. Okay, You can also have humidifiers for your room but again you need to keep it in that 40 to 60 percent range. Your instrument is not happy outside of that range and then we can have all sorts of problems. When we get into fall the bigger concern for fall into winter is cracking. So if it's too dry, your instrument can crack. So humidifica humidification is important. Take care of that, people. Take care of it. Okay. Uh, along with that, when it comes to your practice room, okay, make sure that you do a thorough cleaning of your practice room or the area that you're practiced in. Okay, get it organized. Put everything in there that you need. So the supplies that we've talked about, if you're not going anywhere, instead of stocking up your case, stock up your practice space or practice room. Um, when you get your supplies, like your books that you wanna read or your new technique books, put it in there, put it on a shelf, get everything organized so you know where it is so that you're not wasting practice time searching for everything. Okay. Um, your music bag. So I have a, a cello shaped case, okay, and I have a music bag that attaches on the back. 
Um, if you don't have that, if you have the pocket on the side of your violin, that's what I'm talking about. Or if you're a student with a fractional size instrument, you're not going to have uh, a bag at all. So you usually have a tote bag for younger students. What you need to do is make sure that you clean it out. Okay, take out everything in there that you don't need. Um, and then restock it with all the things that you do need, okay? But you need to clean it out and you need to organize it. Okay, something else that young students should check um, prior to fall is the size of their instrument. Um, and then once that's sorted out, how are the tapes on that instrument if you're using tapes? Do they need to be replaced? How are they looking? This is something you want to take care of before fall starts. Okay, for me, the fall quarter begins September 1st. So these are all things I'm trying to get done <laughs> before September 1st so that I am ready to rock and roll and meet my goals, make some progress. Okay. Um, if you are playing in an orchestra or a quartet, um, I don't know that this is happening for most people right now, but if you're playing in an orchestra or a quartet, when you get your sheet music, you need to mark in the measures. Uh, the measure numbers. This is really helpful for practicing so that you can find measures quickly and easily so we don't spend um, time during rehearsal trying to figure that out. So write in your uh, measure numbers, pencil them in, that's helpful. Okay. Um, if you have old orchestra music or quartet music that you find when you clean out your practice room or your violin case, your music bag, please return it to your librarian, your orchestra librarian, or whoever is the librarian for your quartet, okay? Don't hold on to old pieces. All right, guys, it's expensive. Give it back. All right. Now, again, if you're playing in a quartet or an orchestra, make sure you find the recordings for the pieces that you're going to practice. Uh, and or that you're going to learn or perform and start listening to them. Okay, I already mentioned this. YouTube is great for creating playlists and make sure you start listening uh, before you start practicing and make sure you practice before you come to that first rehearsal in the fall. Okay, get your stuff together, your personal stuff. All right, I think we're down to the last uh, section here, friends. Motivation. Okay, so you... Everybody needs uh, motivation from time to time, okay? It always waxes and wanes. It doesn't matter which level you're at on your music journey. Professionals also need a source of motivation, okay? So for motivation, you can find things on YouTube. You can watch concert artists on YouTube. Um, you can find new recordings that have been released recently and purchase it, right? And start listening to it. That can be a great source of motivation. Sign up for workshops and additional trainings for the fall, okay? Uh, if you're a student, make sure you're enrolled in lessons. If you're an adult or an amateur, maybe going back to lessons. Um, it couldn't be easier right now through Zoom. Uh, you know, you don't even have to uh, take the time out of your day extra to drive, right? You can have your lesson and use that time that you would normally drive to practice. Okay. Um, there are magazines that I really like. I subscribe to Strad and to Strings. I think Strings might have a version for teenagers too. So um, by subscribing to those magazines, you can also get them digitally if you don't want the paper copies. Um, there's all kinds of stories and you stay up, on, up to date on news in the string world. Like that's where it's at, okay? Um, reading those articles can be really motivating. So get yourself a, a subscription to Strad or Strings Magazine, okay? Um, again, I don't know that this is happening right now, but normally you could um, buy concert tickets, right? That's a great way to get motivated, all right? Who's playing in your town locally this fall? Go out and support them um, if you can, if it's, it's, if it's available. I don't think the BSO is playing right now because of COVID and they shouldn't. Okay, because that's the way it is. I know it's really, really sad right now because of the COVID situation where we can't really perform, but it's more important to protect uh, the vulnerable people in our population. So 
we might have to find some other ways to motivate ourselves other than uh, concerts, but normally uh, buying concert tickets would be a great source of motivation. Okay, friends, I think we did it. I think I accomplished everything on my list of what I do to prepare for the fall. Um, fall's my favorite. I'm so excited about uh, the upcoming quarter. Um, I'm ready to rock and roll. I think I've got everything organized so I can start accomplishing my goals and grow as a musician, uh, a teacher, deaf doula, and a clinical violinist. All right, guys, I hope this helped you. Um, maybe I should have told you to grab a piece of paper and take notes uh, or your practice journal and take notes in there, right? Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to leave comments in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Okay. So I made the mind map so I wouldn't forget anything. I forgot something. T, I have to have chai. Okay, that is on my list. That is a requirement. It's sort of my ritual for fall practice. I start by making myself a cup of chai and then I get my practice done. Okay, so I forgot to add that to my list. Just wanted to put it on there. I came back to record it again because it is so important. I don't practice without the chai. <laughs> Bye guys.